Welcome back, Wolfpack. Vrillis here, and this is how to use Honchcrow. Honchcrow, at first glance, has some crazy stats. 100 on the hit points, 125 on the attack. Not too many Pokemon have that. And then 105 on the special attack does give you some mixed potential. So looking at those stats right there, that's pretty nice. Unfortunately, 71 speed and 50 on the defenses just isn't really going to cut it. The reason why we don't see Honchcrow too often is probably because of this right here, that the 100 hit points looks great, but with those 50s on the defenses, it just it turns out to have an average bulk for a Pokemon. So, you know, you're in the realm where you're not going to directly get one shot by everything, still have to worry about super effective hits that are really powerful, and other than that, it's pretty standard. And then there's the 71 speed. That That's not that great for a Pokemon. Like, if it had 110 speed in that 125 attack, it could work out a little better, but 71 speed means you're only going to be able to outspeed bulkier Pokemon and then try to use that 125 to break them down. But you do also need to put some care into getting Honchkrow faster. And if you could do that, then you might be onto something. Look at its typing, it's a dark flying type. Rock, electric, ice, and farrier are going to be your weaknesses. You get two immunities with ground and psychic and three resistances. So pretty balanced on that side. Unfortunately, you do have quite a few common weaknesses with rock, ice, and fairy, and electric to a degree. So you do have to try to avoid those. But in that, your the rest of your coverage is actually pretty good. Dark and flying is going to be pretty nice for stab, and it just really balances out pretty well. So hopping into Pokemon Showdown, let's see how to use Honchkrow. And when we break down the stats, there's a lot of directions you can go. And we look at the abilities, Honchkrow has one of the strongest abilities in the game in my opinion, and that's Moxie. This Pokemon gains one stat of attack if it KOs another Pokemon. That's huge. That's huge, because if you bring in Honchkrow in the mid to late game where there's already Pokemon that are weakened, if you have entry hazards up, just making it easier to whittle away at your opponent's team, Honchkrow can go big. This is probably why it doesn't have too much speed, because if you could outspeed everything, get one Moxie boost, and then just OKO the rest of the team, it, it, it would win forever. Look at its other abilities, Insomnia, Pokemon cannot fall asleep. It's a good ability, that it does uh, stop some team compositions right there, but at the same time, it does, just doesn't beat Moxie, and then Super Luck. We'll talk about Super Luck in a bit because Honchkrow does have kind of a Super Luck strategy. Actually, let's talk about it right now. So the cool thing about Super Luck, it's Pokemon that have it. Super Luck. All this Pokemon's moves have their crit ratio raised by one stage. Well, that means you're going to have 12.5% chance to crit on every move. Really good to bust down Pokemon that are boosting in their defenses. That way you can just ignore those defenses and do bonus damage. Razor Claw. Adds one more to the critical hit ratio. And then a move like Night Slash, high critical hit ratio, that just means plus one. And now this Pokemon crits 100% of the time. And that's actually really good. Also, another thing with Super Luck is if you baton pass a Focus Energy. Focus Energy gives plus two to critical hit. And then that means now every move is going to crit regardless of what you use as long as it has Super Luck. So what you can do is, like on Super Luck Pokemon, you can do something like this. Moves are always going to crit, but on Honchkrow, it's not really that effective because Moxie. If you just get a Moxie boost, that's 1.5 times damage. A critical hit is 1.5 times damage. So Moxie just has higher snowball potential, and it lets you free up an item. But if you do have just super luck into something else, with that focus energy coming in, now you can run maybe a focus sash, you can run a life orb choice band, something like that. At least everything's going to crit, but at the same time, you're kind of wasting baton pass potential. That Honchkrow, we were talking earlier that if you get some speed into him, that's going to be huge. So if you just baton pass speed, maybe even a sword dance into it, now Honchkrow is looking to be kind of ridiculous. So with the dark and flying dual typing, it's also going to have very strong stab. That Brave Bird is one of the strongest moves that, um, because of Talonflame, it's kind of underrated on other Pokemon. But remember, Talonflame has a very low attack in comparison to Honchkrow. That Honchkrow has a 125 attack using Brave Bird. We know that that's going to secure a ton of KOs if you do get the outspeeds or you find that speed into it. Also at the same time, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch getting stab is ridiculous. So Sucker Punch works by having 80 base power, and if the opponent is going to attack, you gain priority over them, and then you attack first and do a ton of damage. So Sucker Punch plus Life Orb plus the, the uh, Adamant Nature, and if we were also looking at Moxie, we're looking at a lot of one-hit KOs. That If you get that first Moxie boost, you're really just set, and then you can Sucker Punch through the rest of the team. You can do this by looking at the rest of your set. Pursuit. Pursuit power doubles if a foe is switching out, and it's also going to hit that foe, so it gains the priority over the opponent switching out, which means, okay, you bring it on low health target, and then you can all you have to do is anticipate, well, they're probably going to want to switch out because Honchkrow can pick them up really easily. You use Pursuit, that's a free Moxie, and now you're at plus one Sucker Punch with Life Orb, doing enough damage to almost knock out every Pokemon. But then we have to also look at the other things that you're running on this. Do you need the speed? That if you have a sticky web on the field, that could really help with the speed. It'll let you outspeed a lot more Pokemon. It doesn't quite make it to the higher speed tiers, but as long as your Pokemon doesn't have any super hyper fast sweeper Pokemon, you can still make use of it. 
So then now you're looking at just outspeeding with Brave Bird, outspeeding with Roost, trying to get some uh, boost back into you, and then just following through with the Sucker Punches, Brave Birds, and cleaning up KOs from there. But then you can also look at how you want to run Hunch Crow defensively. That if you are taking Life Orb Burn damage, you are doing Brave Bird, and you aren't taking too much damage back, you know, if you're at that plus one, you might be in a good position. But, you know, you can do a Sucker Punch. If the, po if the opponent is really bulky and they're trying to set up, you can use a Roost, get some health back for free, you Sucker Punch again, and then you're really going to be two-hit KOing them. And once Moxie hits plus two, really very, 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 very few Pokemon can survive through that. So as long as you're making the good predictions on the Moxie between Roost and when they're attacking, when they're not attacking, you're going to want to put those EVs into the defenses. Why? Well, the hit points are so high on Honchkrow, and the defenses are so low that boosting the defenses gives you more effective hit points, and you're actually going to be taking less percentage of your health in damage just doing the defensive spread like this. So this is going to make you tankier in this regard. Now, this is like one of the more main ways of running Honchkrow. Also, you can just go screw it and say, Choice Band, Moxie, Sucker Punch, come at me, bro. Pretty much, if you can like clean up an easy Moxie on a good prediction with Sucker Punch, or if they're just... If it's in the, that mid to late game where the opponent's Pokemon have damage, again, if Stealth Rocks is up, Stealth Rocks plus a plus one Choice Banded Sucker Punch, not many things are going to be able to survive through that. If you can actually keep that setup going, Honchkrow is just going to steam and roll your team. And remember, it's really just about getting to that first one or two Moxie boost. That if Honchkrow ends up going plus two on KOs, it's really, it starts becoming unstoppable, and that's why with the Choice Ban, it gives you more freedom to just run that defensive set, because, well, I'm not using Roost, I'm using Sucker Punch only pretty much, so I don't have to worry about outspeeding anything. It's going, you're pretty much just going to need to run it like this. Now, this can be predicted and stalled out, that Sucker Punch does have a low amount of PP, only 8. So, if you're not using it wisely, and your opponent's just like, well, I'm going to use Recover, I'm going to just keep throwing out Stealth Rocks, even though I already have Stealth Rocks set up. If they can burn through your Sucker Punches in that way, that's not going to be good, so you might want to switch out to a Pokemon that can taunt. That way, now you're setting, shutting down setup, and you also have Haunch Crow to respond to those setup Pokemon as well. That If you taunt a Pokemon that's mainly going to be set up, they switch out, you switch in your Haunch Crow, you get a free switch, and then that just kind of plays into some mind games. So, while it does make you predictable, if you can out mind game your opponent, you're also gaining a huge, huge edge right there. And then also, it is worth noting, nasty plot on Haunch Crow to a degree. Problem is, with a dark type Pokemon, uh, with Sucker Punch and as much attack as Honchkrow, you're kind of giving up a lot by not doing a Sucker Punch kind of strategy. But at the same time, you can use that to your advantage. If your opponent thinks that you're going to be a Sucker Punch Pokemon, so they try to set up, well, now you're setting up over them, and Nasty Plot is huge. Honchkrow does have a very high special attack for Nasty Plot Pokemon. That over 105 that you boost up with Nasty Plot, now you're dealing with over 650 special attack at level 100. That's... That's really absurd right there, and then now we just use Dark Pulse, going to have Stab. Honchkrow also gets Heat Wave, and then you can still have Sucker Punch to try to handle Sash Pokemon. So with this, again, speed is going to be the key. Getting a Baton Pass into Honchkrow with some speed can be very strong. Sticky Web's going to be very strong. Or in double battles, you have a Pokemon that's supporting you using Icy Wind. You can do something like that. Now you set up a Nasty Plot, they get Icy Wind. You start to get those speed over your opponent, and they can throw out Heat Wave. Plus two on that Heat Wave is going to be pretty big. You also still have Dark Pulse to single out opponents. And there's just some potential here. Uh, Focus Sash means it's going to give you that second chance that you do counter out the other Focus Sash Pokemon because you have priority over them with the Sucker Punch. And then if Moxie gets going, well, you get plus two on Moxie, plus one on Moxie. Well, now your Sucker Punch is actually going to start being reliable for damage. That if you use Heat Wave, you knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon, the other one survives, and you get that Moxie boost. Well, even without any boost into your attack, they're probably in Sucker Punch KO range. So now you finish them off real quick, and you're only worrying about damage from one opponent at this rate. It does take a lot of setup, and you do need to have that Icy Wind or some kind of speed to support. But it still can be a very interesting way of setting up Haunch Crow. Also, because it does get Nasty Plot. Just worth mentioning, if anything else. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's how you use Hodgecrow and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire.